You hear me, Jennifer? I won't go. I'll have respect, not insolence. Now, what's your answer? I'm not going, sir. Can't we discuss this later on, Henry? There's nothing to discuss, Grace. My mind's made up. By the first of the month, Jennifer will be in finishing school. Timothy Donovan, you're not noted for being closed-mouthed. That uh, marriage that you didn't tell me about, hurt must have run pretty deep. We were very, very much in love. Were, I still am. I've had to block it out of my mind to keep from going mad over the years. Not that it's any of my business, dear friend. No matter, it's an old story. Poor but ambitious sailor from Dockside runs off with rich and very beautiful girl. Henry Carpenter, that's her uncle, had to get rid of me. He arranged with one of his partners to frame me in a swindle. I had to leave town. Tim. Have you ever thought about leaving sleeping dogs lie? Oh, I have to see my son first. When I go into that house, I'm going in in style. My son will see me as a gentleman. I'll have no pity from him. A condescension from the carpenters. Now, Tim, you know that I am not against vulgar display. But I must remind you that our funds are running terribly low. And this, uh, partner. Uh, oh, Rumford, Silas Rumford. Silas Rumford. He sounds like a perfect mark for one of our little charades. <laughs> It will be my pleasure, Count von Kromwitz. Ach. <laughs> we'll pull the old shipping insurance fraud on him. And we'll double it back. Rumford will recognize it as a swindle the minute he hears it. <laughs> and pay you handsomely to double-cross me, Captain Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> Kronwitz, Art von Kronwitz, at your service, sir. Well, what can I do for you? I am here on a matter of the utmost discretion. I believe you know how this has to be handled. And take two men with you. Yes, sir. Have a chair. Ah. My mission here is to ask you if you have a boat, a big boat of ample cargo space, ready to leave. Tomorrow night. Oh, <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> not possible? Huh. I was told that you dealt in this type of transaction. Obviously, I've uh, been misinformed. Uh, what do you need the ship for? My dear sir, if it were possible for me to tell you of my plans, it would be just as impossible to pay you amply for your discretion. And how much is that? Five thousand dollars in gold. Only if our little transaction is kept completely out of the records. And I must choose the crew. The master of the ship, a Captain Higgins, can be found at this very moment at the hook and net. A one-eyed brigand of dubious character, but an able seaman. Well, I think we can get you what you're looking for, Count. Are you Captain Higgins? Yeah, I've got no time for you now, lad. My name is Silas Rumford. <laughs> well, it's taxes you're after. I pay no taxes. If you're a shipper, I got a ship. And all about your ship, Captain. That's why I'm here. That and gold. Gold. Captain, will you join me? 
Rumford's word is his sponsor. <laughs> uh, Captain, here's a little something on accounts. I don't mind if I look at it, do you? I've had lead in my hands before, you know. see Mrs. Donovan. There is no Mrs. Donovan here. Mrs. Grace Donovan? Oh, you must mean Miss Grace Carpenter. Yes. May I have your hat, please? Whom shall I say is calling? Mr. Donovan. Wait here, please. Miss Carpenter. friend of Jamie's? I am Jamie. Jamie Carpenter. You're Jamie? You're a girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and who are you? I'm... I'm an old friend of your mother's. Tim! It is you. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. We heard that you were... I, I, I never heard that... Oh! Ah! Uh, have you... Have you met Jamie? I, uh... I told her that I was an old friend of yours. Yes. A very dear old friend. Uh, I, bought, I bought these for you. Oh. And, uh... Okay. Hmm? What's this? Well, it, it's, it's nothing, really. It's just something I bought. Ah. Uh. It's, uh... Hickok had a hat just like this. It's just perfect. Thank you. 
It's a beautiful present. I really love it. I'm going to see how it looks with my other clothes. Oh, Jamie, you, uh... Kit Carson's frontier apparel. That girl has Donovan's blood in her veins, all right. I know. I see it every time I look into her eyes. She calls herself Jamie Carpenter. Has she ever heard my name? No. Why? Uncle Henry. I never want to hear the name Donovan mentioned in this house again, eh? Tim, you must believe me. I, I fought him as long as I could, but we heard that you had died in New York. Died? Yes. I wrote you every week for a year. You never answered. I never got them. Henry. Tim, I, I finally had to give in. And you allowed Henry to have our marriage in Holden? Oh, great. No, 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 Tim, please. Don't start again. We hurt ourselves too much in the past. It, it's done with. It's not done with, Grace. I see it in your eyes. I heard it in your voice the minute you walked in here. It's no more over for you than it is for me. Uh, Tim, my feelings don't matter. I, I, I can't change them, but oh, it has to be over with. You and I could never live in peace together. Not then, not now, not ever. Oh, I'm truly sorry, Tim. So am I, girl. So am I. One more thing? Yes. Grace, is it possible that you and Jamie and I could slip away for a little family dinner together before I leave? I have an even better idea. We will have dinner here. Uncle Henry is in Sacramento and won't be back until tomorrow. Well, after I left New York, I went to Ireland, um, Italy, Greece, Alexandria, India, all around the world. Every port I could find a ship for. Wish I could travel like that. Oh, you will, Jamie, you will. I mean, after all, life is nothing but a journey. I watched them drive the Golden Spike and left the next morning for Creed, Colorado. What'd you do in Colorado, Mr. Donovan? Well, for a while there, I was a deputy to uh, Bat Masterson. The real Bat Masterson? The one and only. Grace, you'll never believe the land that I staked out. Not another dream ranch. No, 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 this is the real thing. No, 160 acres of the grandest land in the Oklahoma Territory. Oh, it's magnificent. I would have thought you'd had your fill of rainbows and ranches. They disappear when you get too close to them. Not always, girl. Would you like some more coffee? No. No, thank you. Uh, Frida, would you please bring the brandy into the living room? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. When are you be going to Virginia City? I'll be leaving on the morning stage, I'm afraid. What are you going to be doing in Virginia City? Search for a fortune in silver, my dear. In the Comstock load. Grace? Leland and I decided to come back a day early. Donovan. The very same, sir. I never seem to learn, Mr. Donovan, not to turn my back on you. I'll never make that mistake with you, Mr. Carpenter. Not a second time. This is Mr. Leland Ralston. Mr. Donovan. Grace. I'm sure that Grace has told you that she and Mr. Ralston are engaged to be married. I know, as a matter of fact, uh, she had not mentioned it. 
Well, today has been full of surprises. I assume, sir, that you are a business associate of Mr. Carpenter's. Well, I hope to be. Oh, yes, keeping it all in the family, 